add some more to this existing web form. We still have text boxes, a selection menu, and a couple of radio buttons. I'm going to add some check boxes as well. And I'll put the check boxes in the same group. Now check boxes, check boxes actually have a very similar structure to radio buttons. Um, no, I think I will take these up and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this entire field set, copy it, paste it, and I'm going to make these into check boxes because they're very, very similarly structured. There we go. So I've made a new field set under my shipping field set. I'm calling this one extras. Um, instead of radio buttons, they will be check boxes. Similar to radio buttons, a group of check boxes that are related will share the same name. Not as critical, but still, that's the, that's the that's the standard. Um, so the name will be extras, and the extras we can have we can have uh, let's see, gift wrapping, and uh, a gift card. There we go. So just a couple minor changes. Like radio buttons, check boxes have their input element on the left and the label is to the right. So I've got one for gift wrapping, one for gift card. And really the only difference between these two kinds of things is that with check boxes, <laughs> oops, little typo there, check box, check box. The only real difference between radio, radio buttons and check boxes is with check boxes you can select multiple of the group. There we go. Radio buttons you only select one of the items. Check boxes you can select multiples. Okay. In addition to check boxes, I'd like to have a text area, a place where someone can type a little bit more information. So I'll create a new field set. And in this area, I'm going to use a text area tag. There is an opening and closing text area tag. And this, too, deserves a label. There we go. Save this, check it out. Okay, so now I have a comment area where a person could type in more than a basic text box, type in paragraphs of information. Now I haven't done any formatting with these latter items, and we have obviously different options about that. Uh, since my radio buttons are using labels, so I could format the width of the labels and so forth. Um, but for now, I'm going to leave these as they are just so we can kind of finish up and talk about a couple finer points on here, especially with the submit button. The comment box, you notice, is by default empty. And a person can type in as much as they want in here, and then they can submit this. So these are pretty common, and these are often used in uh, areas if you're going to create a discussion board or a message board or something like that, or a uh, commentary on a blog. So I've got these things where someone can leave information, text boxes, selection menus, radio buttons, check boxes, and um, of course a text area box. But I still need an ability to submit these. So I'm going to create another field set. And this will be one of the easiest of the group. It's a simple input tag, type equals submit. That's really all there is to it. And that gives us a default submit button. However, most will go a step further and they are going to put a value. We'll put in place order, assuming this is for an order form. There we go. 
the value of the input type submit will be the button text. And that's a pretty standard web browser button. Each web browser has a slight variation on the look of this button, by the way. Now, if you want to do some variations with this, well, that's what CSS is all about. And I might even make a class for button here. And since I have a button class, I can use my CSS to make this button look however I would like it to look. So my button class will be to have um, a border left that's going to be two pixels, solid and a very dark gray. And I'm going to do a border top it's also that same dark gray. Now what I'm doing is I'm creating a kind of a shadow effect. I'm also going to do a border right. It's black. There we go. So there's the look of my button. Gives kind of a little three-dimensional look to it. And let's see. Oops, I did border right both times. I'll do a border bottom here. There we go, so now I've got my little 3D looking button, and instead of that gray background color, there we go, light shade of purple, so now we can have a different looking button. Now we saw on that uh, ABC News website a bit earlier, the first video, where they used an image instead of an actual button tag and that's pretty easy to do as well instead of using input type submit for your submit button you would do input type image replace the word submit with the word image and then you would include a source attribute or SRC attribute with the location of that particular image and if you do an input type image it will become the submit button for your form all of these items are within my form tag so that will create one complete form. Now that I have a submit button, the form is going to try to get sent to whatever web address or folder I have in the action attribute of my opening form tag. Of course, I don't have an, a script referenced in there, so it's not going to function. It's going to look for URL to, the, to my form script. But that's a basic web form. Now, there's lots of great examples of good-looking web forms out there. So you should really look at a bunch of different ones, find the features you like, and then you'll often use those things over and over again. Smashing Magazine is a great website and blog, and I'd certainly encourage you to subscribe to their RSS feeds. But here's an article, just one of many out there available on the web, where people have taken a little bit of extra time to make some very nice looking web forms. And by using those basic form elements and some CSS, and in some cases a little bit of JavaScript, you can have some really nice professional looking forms. And if you're going to be selling a product, if you're asking somebody for money, you want to make your website look as professional as possible. So you want to take that extra effort to make a really good looking form.